What is up, y'all? My name is Josh Minyard. I'm a huge fan of movies, especially horror. If you're a lover of the genre or even a moderate watcher of the sinister and macabre, then you and I are probably familiar with a lot of the same movies. You've seen the mainstream horror classics, you've watched the more recent hits, and you've binged the popular 80s slashers more times than you can possibly count. But that leads me to the question, what about the others? No, I don't mean the Nicole Kidman movie. I mean the lesser knowns, those hidden horror classics. Don't they deserve some love? Of course, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's give it to them. So it must be said, if you find yourself disagreeing with these rankings, just know this list is totally subjective. Totally. With that said, let's get it going. Filling in the tin spot is Bob Clark's Death Dream, also known as Dead of Night. At its simplest, this movie is about a young soldier who dies in the Vietnam War and then comes back home to live with his family. The simplicity and intrigue in the logline alone makes this film unique and without a doubt worth a watch. The movie is also a nice allegory on the effects of PTSD, and it feels even more poignant considering the film was made before PTSD was even recognized as a mental disorder. I also appreciate that it's never completely revealed what exactly Andy is. We know he's dead, but is he more zombie or vampire? Death Dream does a good job Job of taking the best of both, and the makeup effects are excellently grotesque, especially towards the end. Ultimately half drama, half horror, Death Dream should definitely be on your watch list. Toby Hooper's The Fun House is not exactly what I would call a good horror movie. The teens exploring the carnival is way too slow as we follow them around for literally every event. They try to win a prize, now they gotta check out a show, the whole show. They're hungry, so now they gotta eat. All this and so much more meandering before the movie finally shifts in gear and gets to its steak, meat, and potatoes. Did you say steak? The last act is also a bit of a letdown, as the film never seems to find its scary feet. The best part of the movie is the middle, when the characters are silent witnesses to a murder. It's a hold your breath scene, and their eventual cover being blown is the icing on the cake. The real star, however, is the film's setting and story. Four teens sneaking into and spending the night at a carnival funhouse, and then trying to survive the wacko showrunner and his monstrous and genetically deformed son? Sign me up. It's that premise alone, combined with some strong visual moments, that make this movie consistently memorable. Even though the film's not great, there was no way I couldn't put it on this list. Society is unquestionably the weirdest movie on this list, but it's also one of the most fun and obviously totally underrated. Totally. Bill just can't relate to his family. He constantly feels like an outsider, and he even tells his therapist he thinks he might be adopted. That suspicion only grows because as the film moves along, his family gets weirder and weirder. People around town also start to get pretty weird, and pretty soon Bill discovers a Truman Show level conspiracy going on. But what is it exactly? What is this secret society and what do they want? Ultimately that question is what drives Bill and the narrative, eventually leading up to one of the most memorable climaxes ever, as you'll bear witness to some strikingly bizarre visuals. Society is such a freakishly fun oddity and one that doesn't get near enough praise. Just before Dawn slipped through the cracks in the early 1980s during the blow up of the slasher film. Ignoring the warning of the local game warden, a group of young adults travel into the wilderness to check out some land one of them recently purchased. Eventually, they're sliced and diced one by one by a huge backwoods hillbilly. If I had to best describe this movie, I'd say it's a cross between The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Deliverance. A traditional slasher and horror film at its core, Just Before Dawn embraces a darker tone with some genuinely unsettling moments. The characters are mostly likable and feel very real. The deaths and chase scene intense, the sounds and scenery are intoxicating, and there's even a nice little twist midway through. If I had to nitpick, I'd say the climax isn't quite up to par with the rest of the film. All in all, Just Before Dawn is the first legitimately underrated movie on this list. You know, as opposed to illegitimately. I can't help it, I just have so much fun with this movie. House of Wax is a visually compelling and unique tale. Whoa, wait a minute. This is all wrong. Okay, we gotta fix this. This is the House of Wax that tickles my fancy. Come on, you didn't really think I meant the Paris Hilton remake. Now we're going a bit old school as House of Wax will be the oldest movie on this list, but this Vincent Price classic is totally underrated. Totally. The early 1900s setting perfectly suits the story, and the museum and wax figures is freaky, providing a strong visual backdrop. Also, Vincent Price is at the top of his game, but to be fair, he always is. And the 1950s screams are an absolute delight. <laughs> There's also a very young Charles Bronson as Igor, excellent makeup effects, and to top it all off, a genuinely thrilling climax. There's no other way to put it. House of Wax is just flat out fun. You will have to get past the cheesy fights though. In contrast, 2018's The Clove Hitch Killer will be the most recent offering on this list. They're not exactly a full-blown horror film. Clove Hitch provides enough tension, suspense, thrills, and horrific scenarios that I would definitely consider this a qualifier. In short, the story revolves around a young boy scout who begins to suspect that his father is a serial killer, and holy crap does it live up to that extremely enticing premise. There's something to be said about film stories that you can hold in the palm of your hand, and I think that's a common theme with the movies on this list. The story also hits very close to home and will make you feel quite uncomfortable on numerous occasions. Dylan McDermott was splendidly cast. His awkward, trying too hard to seem normal persona fits almost too well within the narrative. 
You're constantly hoping he really isn't a monster, hoping he's just an awkward guy, and all of the unusual coincidences can be explained away. But of course we know the truth, not because we haven't been shown it yet, but because, come on, it's a movie, and this is the most dramatically satisfying. Anxiously anticipating the son catching and confronting his serial killer father. This is where the power of the movie lies. It's a sad and disturbing story, powerful cinema, and a must-see not only for fans of the genre, but films in general. Coming in at number four is Thesis, the first of two foreign language films on this list. A college student named Angela decides to write her thesis on the effect violence in media has on its viewers. To prepare, she seeks out the most brutal underground video she can get her hands on, courtesy of her new friend Kima. Soon they discover a real snuff film of a girl beaten, murdered, and dismembered. They're also certain the girl on the tape is a girl who went missing two years ago, and that someone at school or who has access to the school is the one responsible for the heinous act. And honestly, if you haven't seen this movie, that's all you need to know. Thesis is an outstanding horror thriller, and unquestionably the best movie about snuff films. The acting is on point, the script solid, the subject matter unsettling, and there's countless hair-raising moments and constant edge-of-your-seat mystery. There's also twists and turns, but Thesis never stumbles into convoluted territory. The film perfectly feels inevitable yet surprising at the same time. Simply put, this is an underrated masterpiece. If you're familiar with this channel, then you know I sort of have a thing for dummies. They provide a strong visual and can just flat out look creepy. Such is the case for 1978's Richard Attenborough directed Magic. And yes, I mean that Richard Attenborough. Is there another one? Anthony Hopkins stars as Corky. He's a talented ventriloquist who quickly rises to newfound fame thanks to his humorous and convincing dummy act. Fats even looks like Corky, and as the narrative dives deeper, you'll not only wonder if he's alive and real, but start to question who exactly is controlling who. Though the film evolves into a bit more of an intimate drama as Corky reconciles with an old high school crush, Magic is a horror film at its core, with its main focus exploring the demented relationship between Corky and his dummy. With good and great films, there's usually specific moments or scenes that have a strong emotional impact on the viewer. The scene where Corky's manager forces Corky to last five minutes without controlling fats is excellent cinema. This scene highlights just how crazy Corky is, as he can't even go half that time without bringing Fats to life. The dummy murder is also excellent, as it provides an outstanding buildup just before Fats slips the knife into the unknowing victim. Anthony Hopkins also delivers one of his best performances. It's a true shame this film doesn't get more love. Coming in at the number two spot is the movie that inspired Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. To be fair, Diabolique is starting to get a little more recognition in recent years, and it even had a nice shout out in the Anna Kendrick movie A Simple Favor. But in my opinion, this film is still undervalued. Christina has inherited a boy's boarding school, yet her toxic bully of a husband runs it. This guy is as nasty as they come, belittling and abusing Christina any chance he gets. Fed up, she and her close friend decide to murder him. If you haven't seen this movie, I don't want to say any more because like Thesis before it, that's all you need to know going in. Even if you know where the story is headed, it's still effective. Another thing I feel enhances this film is the use of silence, as well as the complete lack of a musical score. And actually, it was this film that inspired my horror short, Whitetail, at least in that regard. So if you haven't seen it, show that some love too. All in all, Diabolique is a masterful thriller horror, and if you're a fan of older cinema like I am, then it's an absolute must for your watch list. So unfortunately, I've decided not to rank a number one movie for this list. Main reason being is I think there's way too many great underrated horror movies. And to put one as a true number one just wouldn't feel right. With that said, I'm going to close this video out, and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm just kidding. But seriously. Come on, y'all. I'm not going to do you that dirty. There was absolutely no doubt in my mind what was going to be number one on this list. Black Christmas, Bob Clark's early 1970s slasher, is a masterpiece and one of the best horror movies ever, regardless of underrated status or not. Over Christmas break, a stranger sneaks into the attic of a sorority house and stalks and kills the girls one by one. That's it. That's the story. It's as simple as that, and it's one of the primary reasons this film is so effective. It's also this film and not When a Stranger Calls that introduced the bit where the calls are coming from inside the house, and it's a supremely chilling moment. In fact, I'm confident in saying there's not a single movie on this list that'll make your skin crawl more than this movie. And actually, it even makes a reference to that on the film's poster. Black Christmas's tone and setting are chilling. The old 1970s design and decor make the sorority house almost feel like a monster itself, and the uncertainty of the silent stalker's whereabouts help to create some of the best moments of the film. The climax is one of the most chilling in horror history, and the film's closing moments create intense unease as there is no genuine closure. Like a lot of horror movies from the 70s, the story and plot feels very real. Because quite frankly, this easily could have really happened. To me, it's that reality factor that makes the best horror films the best horror films. Simply put, they don't make them like this anymore. If you love horror and haven't seen this film, put away YouTube, rent it, grab your popcorn, and turn off the lights. I have a strong feeling you'll be thanking me for it. That wraps it up for my top 10 underrated horror movies. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your top 10 in the comments below. And when you do get a chance to watch these movies, don't forget to scream.